Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jakey here, Tag, and today we're back again with one of the most difficult decks to master in Clash Royale. You can pull off some crazy defensive plays with the Mini P.E.K.K.A., Electro Spirit, and the Ice Golem. Every single time I play this deck, there are so many interactions to learn, and I feel like I'm constantly getting better. So let's go jump straight into some games and assert some dominance with one of the new highest skill decks in Clash Royale. And a huge shout out to all the guys that are using credit code Sir Tag. All money made from credit code Sir Tag allows me to upload daily videos while I take full time college courses. I really appreciate all of you guys supporting me and helping me grow the channel. All right, guys, we got a game here. This guy's immediately going to kick it open with a bar butt. So I have to rock at that, guys. We are not allowing more Barbarians to stack up on us today. We're going to shut them all down with our Archers. So when we see Barbut, it's going to be one of two things. Graveyard or Elixir Golem. It's still going to be filthy, but we're trying to distinguish what type of trash you are, sir. So I'm going to go in for a mini packet to block our Archers so they don't immediately fall to the Baby Dragon. We're going to force out a Barbro as well. And a Tornado. You'll love to see it. So because he doesn't have Tornado, we can pull back the Baby Dragon with a Hog Rider and get so much damage with our tower on top of it. So it's looking like it's going to be Elixir Golem, but it still could be Graveyard with Tornado. So Hog Rider hammered through. We're now in the damage lead, and I can Ice Golem kite to the opposite lane. My dude. So what you going to do about that? Battle Healer is going to get devoured by the tower, and we can go in for an Electro Spirit, but not going to be the best play. I think I just want to keep rocking him. We can rocket the Barbarians here too. That's a vibe. Let's go. And now we can finish everything off with our Princess. I wonder if he's going to try to poison it or not. We'll figure it out. If he's got poison, then he definitely has Graveyard. But if he's going to have like Fireball or no big spell, then it's going to be Elixir Golem. So, I don't know, man. Oh, you got Heal Spirit. Now it's definitely going to be Elixir Golem. It's going to be a bit more feisty. I'm going to Electro Spirit here. Let's be able to focus down that Barbarian. I think that the Heal Spirit does connect, but it doesn't heal up the Barb. So, we're fine. I'm going to go Hog here. I'm going to follow up. Oh, there we go, baby. I was going to say, I'm going to follow up with a mini pack if you go for a battle healer, but no. You're going to Tornado, and you missed the Tornado. He tried to activate King Tower with zero hits on the tower. But as a filthy Elixir Golem player, sometimes your mechanics are going to slip. I can Rocket everything at once as well. If you don't know, now you know. Rocket is sublime against Elixir Golem spammers. He can't even support it. He's like, wait, I know this is Hog Rocket. So if I decide to go in for anything with my Elixir Golem, it's free Rocket value. Free real estate. And he was really smart not to do that. But now, he is falling. He is faltering. And all of his elixir is going to be crumbling. Yeah, let's go. He dropped a battle healer right into oblivion. No way. How many archers and princesses can we cycle? Look at this, guys. This is hilarious. We have two princesses, two cycles of archers. We can get a hog rider with a mini pack of brothers out here. There is no way you can stop this dominance train that is coming at you. Full speed ahead. The Polar Express, sir. Our cold heart is going to be destroying everything. Freezing you for the Ice Ages. In your tower, it's not going to be preserved. It is going to be burned to ashes as well. So I don't understand, but everything is falling apart for you, sir. This is what Alicia Golem's players deserve. Justice is a bit is a dish well served of dominance. GG, well played, and peace out, brother. Pleasure playing against you. All right, guys, we're gonna go in for a hog rider. We're gonna see what's up. What you got, dude? If you're gonna go for little Larrys, you're probably gonna have a control deck. Whether it's gonna be a expo deck, balloon cycle, or hog rider cycle, I can't wait to see. So you're gonna go for skeletons and snowball. I think it's probably gonna be a balloon deck or it's gonna be hog. Yeah, so it's gonna be hog earthquake with bomb tower. So we're going to go in for a mini P.E.K.K.A. on top of the Hog Rider, shut it down, go in for an Ice Golem, and I think you're going to go for a Log on top of that? Yeah, we know exactly what you're going to do, sir. We have played your deck before, and we know its capabilities. So if the Ice Golem explodes and the Electric Spirit resets the Bomb Tower, we should get a hit. Oh, let's go! Forcing out a Snowball. That means he has no Log in Cycle, so we can go for Princess at the River. If you go for Skeletons, we Log them. Oh, we're going to go Archers instead. Still some extraordinarily nice log value, so we'll take those. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you for your charitable donation to the cause of Jake winning this game. Just take it. Take it all. So, if you want to go hogs, we just shut it down with a mini packet, and we get counter push. It gets zero hits on the tower if we drop it at the appropriate timing. So, I'm just going to be holding my mini packet, and you won't be able to break through, man. Just got to hold the mini packet and wait and get ready. My body is ready. Oh, come on, man. We were going to deny all damage. Wait, we still did. 
We still denied all damage. I thought the earthquake... Oh, wait. The earthquake doesn't slow anymore. Guys, you know what? My brain is a little bit delayed. The earthquake does not slow down units anymore. So it's pretty funny to realize cards just aren't the same as they were. Have you guys realized that with... Oh my gosh! The Hog Rider locked under the tower! <laughs> I'm really not realizing anything right now. I'm oblivious to every single interaction. But fortunately, they're working out in my way. So... I can go for another Princess of the River, force out a log, get him to go for another Hog Rider. Oh, okay. Wait, what we can do here is we can go Ice Golem and make sure that your Hog Rider is not going to be tanked for by the Knight. So then the Mini Paco locks on with the Tower Support so your Hog Rider doesn't get a hit. You guys saw what I did there. It's the same concept as stopping your opponent's graveyard tank from crossing the river. But we did it with an Ice Golem and an a, uh, actual Knight here because of its hog rider. So if we're able to stop the knight from crossing the river, our tower always targets the hog rider, right? So then we're able to shut it down and take no damage. It's a five and a half. Oh, come on, don't log me like that. You gotta play nice, man. You are not being a nice person. So we're just gonna rocket you out. How about that? How about we blast you off like Team Rocket, send you to the Shadow Realm and a certain undeniable amount of dominance. So I'm gonna Ice Golem again. Just make sure that it doesn't cross. So our tower is just ready and ready to go on top of your hog rider. And then if you don't know, now you know. We got like five stunning capabilities. Whether it's with the ice golem, whether it's with the uh, rocket bouncing things back, the log, or the electric spirit, this man's hog rider is never breaking through. GG, well played and peace out. If you can't break through, maybe you'll throw your phone. <laughs> Pleasure playing against you. All right, guys, we got a game here. We're going to sauce out a good luck, and we're going to see what's up. Definitely want to go for archers in the back to feel out what this man's got. And we still have no clue, dude, because you're not psychoing much. Okay, so when he goes for a bar butt really low, we already know that we got to take his tower down low, too. We're going to hog rider and surpass and bypass any one of your defenses, sir. So Mini Pekka gets on top of the tower. We're going to need an extraordinary amount of value. But can I defend is the real question. That is what we have to worry about here. I'm gonna go for an Ice Golem. I think I can log everything back. I don't wanna hit the tower. I just wanna kill the Cannon Cart. I have simple needs in life. Cannon Cart, don't lock on. It, it did, okay. But it's not gonna lock on for the excessive amount of damage that I got on him. So at this point in the game, we need to hold the door, guys, and maybe we can win. If your opponent's got a graveyard deck, your archers are gonna be stupendous on defense. However, the archers need to start targeting the skeletons instead of hitting all my opponent's units. So archers and princess, if you cycle them apart from each other, obviously not going to give your opponent poison value. This is a really good situation to be in. I can go in for a princess here. If we get two hits on top of the mega minion, then the mega minion gets no hits on our tower. So unfortunately, the princess wasn't able to fire fast enough. She needs to do some exercises, some strength training. We push Cause she just wasn't strong enough, man. Anyway, we can go in for archers here. Usually I say I don't want to cycle my archers near my princess because it gives them poison value. But in this particular position, I just want to be able to destroy your barbarians as quickly as possible so we can circumvent the hut and then eat your tower like the delicious pizza hut it is. So I want to go in for an ice cube in the back and just chill and relax a little bit. Don't want to cycle too aggressively. Ooh, it's rocket value. I could do it. I really wanted to, but I know it's not a good play. I need to be able to cycle Princess here, get a Hog Rider on offense, and stop his spam with the amount of Elixir that I have. So if I played it too aggressive, guys, I wouldn't have had enough Elixir for the Archers, and I would have lost my tower to the Cannon Cart. If you don't know, now you know. These games that you feel like you won early on, they are not won until the game is actually significantly ended. So, we need to see game over on the screen before we say we win this one. I'm going to go for Archers. I'm going to follow up with the Hog Rider so we can force out more Elixir. The good thing about Electro Spirit is it gives you another answer to all the Graveyard Skeletons. If you don't know, now you know. It chains on to everything, and you can just chain up this man's chances of winning the game. You preclude any potential of him breaking through. And if he has a Cannon Cart coming through you, he better Cannonball right off the side of his ship because it's sinking. GG, well played a peace out, brother. Pleasure playing against you and asserting dominance, even against Graveyard Cannon Cart Poison that has Barbutt in a phenomenal matchup against you. You guys can win if you play perfectly. Very tough matchup, though.
All right, guys, we got a game against Rain. What is up, my dude? We're gonna sauce out a good luck and we're gonna see what's good. Definitely wanna go for a princess in the back to kick it open. And he keeps sticking his tongue out at me. How impolite, how rude, sir. I thought everyone was a chivalrous sir in Clash Royale. We're gonna go mute you right now, sir. What you gonna do? You're gonna go for Baby Dragon and you will have a Tombstone. So it's probably gonna be a Lava Hound Miner deck. If that's gonna be the case, we're gonna go for an Electric Spirit so we don't take as much damage. Archers are going to be sublime. We can go and kite the baby dragon into the opposite lane with the mini pack as long as it doesn't go towards the skeleton. Let's go. So archers are definitely going to die here. There is no way to keep them alive. Why would you do that? Why, why would he go for a zap on top of those archers that were already dead? I don't know, but I'll take it. Free elixir, man. Give me the elixir. So I like it a lot. I think we can maybe go for a princess in the back. And then, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think we have Princess in the back and the right. And then we go in for Archers here. We're trying to separate our ranged units so he's not able to hit them all with arrows. I'm expecting arrows zap, guys. I know that I shouldn't be the bearer of bad news and extremely just pessimistic, but that's what I feel like I'm going to get right now. Oh, wait. No, he's got Fireball. Way better for us. Yeah, so if he had arrows, we really want to separate everything if possible. So, Hog Rider is hammering through. The Ice Golem is going to be tanking for the Baby Dragon. We can go for a mini pack on top of the Miner, and we can follow up with Archers immediately after. So, this is really good, guys. The only thing I would have changed is maybe not drop the Electro Spirit, so then the Baby Dragon retargets on top of the Princess. She would have died eventually to the Baby Dragon, but I think that Electro Spirit was not a good person. He was not our ally. He was a wolf in sheep's clothing, guys. He was disguised as one of our units, but in reality, it helped out our opponent. So, I'm going to go for a Hog Rider again. Try to get more chip damage here. He's going to Barbs for sure. I don't even think we get a Hog Rider hit, unless he dropped it too late. Yeah. So, four for five, and we kill the Barbs with the Princess. So, that's a vibe. And you're going to log. Yeah, well, we're going to log now. <laughs> I was like, wait, what you doing, dude? What you doing, fool? So, if we were able to go for a Hog Rider and pull everything back, that's a vibe. He's not going to have Barbs. He's going to go for a Tombstone. And then I think we can outcycle the barbs and the tombstone at once. Maybe I'm too optimistic here, but I'm a believer. So we're going to go in for mini pack up plus ice golem so we can break through. No, we got back to barbs. Why are you the way that you are, dude? Why can't you let me just win the game, brother? So I'm going to go for another hog rider because we know that we kill the barbs. And then he's only got tombstone that we can log. So if we're able to subsequently log the tombstone, force out a fireball, that's a great vibe. Because now we can rocket out the tower. Heck yeah. Okay, he's going to go all in. He knows. If you don't know, now you know. So I'm going to rocket on top of the balloon and all the pups. I thought that the balloon was going to get pushed a little bit off to the side. I thought I lost the game for a second. That was the scariest thing in my life. You guys saw how the balloon got pushed a little bit to the left. I was like, oh, wait, am I going to lose? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we can just rocket him and win the game. One of the best things on offense is just to keep your opponent constantly defending so they can't go for another balloon. So we went for the hog rider. We had a rocket all queued up and we were going to win the game. We had two ways of winning and this man had no way of defending. All right, guys, we got a game against Lord Gremby. What is up, my dude? We're going to sauce out of good luck and we're going to see what's happening. Definitely like order for my hog rider, especially if you can bypass the tombstone. Unless you tornado me, please don't do that to me. Okay, fortunately for us, he did not have Tornado in Cycle, or maybe he's got a Lava Hound deck. And we circumvented his counter to our Hog Rider. Let's go. So we're going to go for a Princess, follow up with an Electro Spirit, and what are you running, dude? What is this insanity? This craziness is not permitted here. We're going to have Goblin Barrel with Tombstone. What are those? Also, we dropped our Archers to destroy the Ceiling Fan and hit the Valkyrie at the same time. That was amazing, guys, because the Archers did not get hit at all pristine HP, and that was a clean getaway like a bank robber, getting that damage from a tower, stealing this man's heart and soul, and he has to go for another tombstone. When we see Valkyrie Goblin Barrel with a really interesting ceiling fan, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what this guy's got, but I know one thing, that I know nothing. <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. I can rocket that Ice Wizard, just get more chip damage. I think that's a vibe. He'll probably go for a Valkyrie or Baby Dragon or something. He went for a Valkyrie. And then he went for the Ceiling Fan. No way. We can Ice Gold. Please body block the Princess. No! Why are you so heartless, dude? Why you gotta log me like that? Can't you be a nice chivalrous sir and give us the damage for free? So currently we are up so much. He's got enough damage on both towers. He's equaling it out. Everything is a perfect state of equilibrium, guys. Perfectly balanced. This whole thing should be. And he doesn't want to mess it up. He's a true scientist. 
So maybe we can go in for a princess in the back, opposite lane of the tombstone, because he'll probably cycle something in the same lane as us. And I don't want to have to defend my princess, guys. What? You've got Golem with Goblin Barrel. I have never seen this in my entire life. Of four years of playing Clash Royale, this is the first time I've seen that. You are setting new records of craziness, sir. So, I'm gonna go in for an Ice Golem here. I know that that ceiling fan is gonna be obnoxious. I think we can finish it off with another princess. So the first princess will get avenged by the second one. The princess sisters. Oh my gosh, get away from me. No, 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 no. Okay, I think we can cycle archers on the goblin barrel, please. Why is this so scary? <laughs> I've never been scared about a goblin barrel tank deck ever. Like, it's usually laughable, audible. I don't understand, sir. It's so laudable playing against your decks, but no, today it's scary. <laughs> and it's quite extraordinary, too. I guess we can go for a mini P.E.K.K.A. Potentially focus everything down with archers. Cycle another hog rider when he goes in for a golem. And then we log the goblins, or log the skeletons, maybe? I think we're able to log the skeletons. Get a hit, yeah, let's go, Hog Rider. Dish it out, one more hit, and we bat off with a three crown. Well, pretty much a three crown victory, guys. We'll take it. Well, it felt like a three crown. Chi Chi, well played, and peace out. You know, when you win those games, it's almost as satisfying as just destroying people with Golden Clone in 30 seconds. Hog Rider bypassing that tombstone, there's no better feeling. We're gonna sauce out of good luck here. We're gonna go in for a hog rider. What you got, man? We're gonna find out real soon. Giant in the back is not a good vibe for us. If it's gonna be a sparky duck, we love to see it. But if it's gonna be anything other than that, it's gonna be extraordinarily scary. So the archers will be able to destroy the electro wizard. And maybe we can focus down the giant with the mini P.E.K.K.A. So we're gonna go and do that real quick. Try to shut it down. And we can go for a princess in the back. Just want to be able to destroy that Mega Minion. The Mega Minion's going to give him so many hits. Oh, he's going to go in for a Poison as well. So, if you Poison, at least you're not going to be hitting the tower that you would have gotten damage on. So now, he's going in the opposite lane of us, guys. That's what we want to do. Every single time you play against a Golem, Elixir Golem, or a Giant deck, you bet that I'm going in the opposite lane of them. If we go same lane, we kind of have an issue where we cycle stuff into Princes and Dark Princes. So... I'm going to log this real quick, and then we can focus it down with the Mini P.E.K.K.A. If we do that, then it can follow up with the Hog Rider, and we have a tank for the Mini P.E.K.K.A. afterward. So that is an extraordinarily good vibe for us. So, oh wait, let's go! You're going to give us value with an Electro Wizard. A donation, if you will. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. And we can go in for an Electro Spirit if we needed to, but I think the Dark Prince dies. I think it does, right? No, it's not going to. I have to Electro Spirit. Oh, come on, man. You made me sacrifice my elixir for that. Anyway, I'm going to go Princess in the back because we know that he's going to still try to get damage here. Even though it's lower HP, I want the Princess to be the opposite lane because he could get so much damage on the left with a Prince push. So I'm willing to take 200 damage as long as we don't get annihilated by the left hand tower. So I'm going to go in for a mini pocket here with our Ice Golem. Shut down the giant and then just get a giant push with a hog rider mini packer. So that's a vibe. I think that the mini pack is gonna get tanked for, so the dark prince gets whittled away. One HP hero. Let's go, guys. That mini packer needs a medal. He is my superhero. He is literally Superman. So I can electric spirit here and then follow up with an ice golem. Going for a hog rider after that and then rocket. If you drop anything on defense like a prince, we can rocket it if it's close enough to the tower. Let's go. So, we're going to be able to destroy the Prince with one more Log and Electro Spirit. The great thing about our deck is with Ice Spirit, you would never be able to hit all the Princes at once. But guys, we are the master of all elements. We are the Avatar with the Electro Spirit. And you can't stop me, dude. Over here! We can go in for a Hog Rider on the right just to make sure that you have to play for your pride right now, man. You have to defend. Aw, oh, he's actually not going to. No, he is. A lot of times people play for their pride and they don't let you take two towers instead of playing aggressive. Because in reality, in a pragmatic situation, you have to take a tower to actually come back in the game. But most of the time they're like, I'm gonna stop my opponent from taking any towers. They don't care about winning, they just care about making me a sad panda.